Hey guys, welcome to Corn Harvest 2021. We finished up with the soybeans, we started picking corn. I got plenty of footage captured on the soybean harvest, as well as the start of corn harvest, and there'll be a lot more to come. So you guys are in for a treat with some good quality videos coming up. But for this video, we're going to go the cheap and easier route for editing. I thought I'd let you guys know what's going on around our farm, as well as some of my thoughts on combines, combine talk in general. We're unloading into the Brent 644 wagon. This wagon is equipped with 315 22.5 dual truck tires, which is a factory option for the Brent wagons. It's being pulled with the uh, John Deere 4850. That's the 4850 you saw in the rebuild videos. The only thing that's not completed on that 4850 is the rear tires and duals. The inners are decent tires. The dual tires are shot. The dual rims are very, very good shape. They're original rims, but they're extremely faded. So this winter, I think I'm going to convert it to 20.842s, which is... 52085 or 42s in metric versions. Uh, to do that's a little bit expensive, and I'll have to sell the inner two tires because they're both really good. But I think that's the way to go. And then at that time, I'll sand all the rims down and repaint them, and that'll complete the tractor. That's a very, very clean 644 wagon that I was able to pick up uh, second hand this year. I bought that wagon at the last minute. We actually ordered two new Kenworth trucks. They were to come down the assembly line in September. And as September got closer and closer, people couldn't get wagons, they couldn't get trucks. And I said, I don't think these trucks are gonna arrive. So we opted to, uh, and we ordered those trucks clear back in early 2021. But anyway, we opted just to go ahead and buy the other wagon. Uh, I'm glad I bought it because uh, the trucks got kicked way back on assembly date. Uh, one's a T800 and one's a T880. The T880 that actually has more chips than the T800 and they actually dropped the order on the 880. The T800 they have promised to build, but they pushed it back uh, to a production date of uh, December 8th. But at least they have promised to build. If you're curious as to why we're buying these trucks, we've previously been hiring our trucking. Uh, that's not cheap. You know, you're basically paying for the new truck anyway, as well as hard to get people. You work around their time schedule. There are certain times of the month where they're busy with other customers, and there might be a dollar rise for a you know a few days. They need grain. Uh, we can captive those uh, target dates uh, better with our own equipment. And we used to have a truck and trailer. It was a very high mileage truck and trailer. When I got into the excavation work, uh, that was sold and we went to hiring because I didn't have time to haul the grain. And now that I have transitioned to a farmer again, we, uh, we have the ability to truck our own grain. So we've opted to get back into our own hauling. And, uh, very difficult to find uh, used good trucks, so I went with new. Now we'll have them for a lifetime that way. And it's just uh, with the shortages, it's been very frustrating to get anything. And probably it's going to be in the, in the 2022 uh, late, maybe quarter three time frame to, to get the uh, second truck. Besides harvest, when we have time, we have been working on the 4620, as well as doing some dozer work. Okay guys, we got the radiator back into the 4620 here. Uh, this radiator was rebuilt at a radiator shop. Uh, if you remember my last video, I said we were debating whether to go with a new radiator, which was $1,200 versus uh, having ours rebuilt, so we stayed with our original factory John Deere uh, radiator. The rebuild shop did a terrific job, even painted it and straight the fins out and found several leaks um, original tractor looks good it's like new heck of a good shop 375 dollar repair bill i don't think you can beat that 
lots going on around the farm, including that 46 20 repair. I'll do a whole video on it uh, coming up as to what we've been doing uh, in our spare time when we have time to work on it. And that's if you can even get great uh, parts. Now, if you guys have noticed, this header here is a little bit different uh, this year than what we've seen in the past, at least on this channel. And if you want to know what we did and why we did it, you can always check that information out on my second channel. <coughs> now, if you look across this field, you can see what a smooth, clean, nice job of cutting this head's doing. And that's because of the Romax kits and the Romax knives. This is a knife roll by John Deere. This is a new knife roll that came out very, very late in the 700 series head, which is now incorporated into the C series headers. This is a 2014 uh, 600 series head, which would be the late serial 600s. And then when they came out with the 700 series heads, it was an identical header with what they called the Romax kit, which was updated chains and guides and everything. They sell it as a kit for this head, which we put it on. Now the knife rolls that came out are a templated opposed knife roll. And it's a chopping knife. Uh, they do have intermeshing, which is a six blade, and they also have a uh, opposed knife roll, which are your more standard knife rolls. This particular knife roll will be the most aggressive offered by John Deere. Now we're going to be dumping into the 6, uh, 6120 here with a Brant 557 wagon. Uh, the tractor pulls the wagon quite well. If you notice by the direction of the dust, it's quite windy out today. And that wind's the reason we don't use a Stockmaster corn head on our particular farm. As we did, that wind would just carry everything and blows it into these terraces uh, along tree lines. It makes quite a mess out of the field. So we're using a chopping roll to chop the material up. We ordered what they call a, uh, John Deere actually calls it a deflector. It's a stock stomper for a more common use term, which just crushes the stock. You have to combine your corn. So we wanted to have a head that's gonna do our tillage, I'll put that in quotes, uh, with the header. So. We did not get those, again, uh, shortages, and now with the UAW strike, probably pushed the order back uh, even further. But we did order them and made an attempt to, to get them. We were unsuccessful. But with the chopping roll and then the stomper, we are able to lay the field down flat, do our, essentially do our uh, tillage work with the uh, head, and that alleviates another pass and it gives a good breakdown of the plant structure for our geographic area. Every geographic area in the United States is farmed a little different. Uh, we got people 20 miles away that are farming a little different just because the soil profiles change. And that's all topics for upcoming videos. But again, if you want to see why we changed the heads we did, go watch my other video on my other channel. Now, what I want to talk about on this channel was combines. Uh, this is a 2015 S680. This, this combine would be your tier 4 final version. It does have the hydraulic feeder blade, uh, which was a majorly improved combine over the S600 series uh, originals that came out, which in my opinion were not as good as the 70 series combine. Uh, the S700 is essentially the same combine as this with a lot of technology revisions which again were likely needed. And the S700 remains in current production, uh, as well as the X9 series gone line. Uh, if you look it up, John Deere essentially makes four com or three combines total. They have four models of the 700s and two models of the X9s. The 760 and 770 are identical combines with the only difference being horsepower, and the 780, 790 are identical, only difference being horsepower. And then the X9 1000, and then the 1100, uh, same deal there. They're identical combines with the only difference being horsepower. Uh, and on the X9 1000 versus the 1100, uh, 
uh, when they dial the horsepower down, they actually cut the unload rate. I suppose they change sprockets or drives. Now, before I get a lot of comments or angry comments about this combine not being right size for this header, it's actually working very, very well. If you go to your John Deere specifications book, you'll notice that all size of these John Deere combines, 760 through 790, all have the same size rotor. They all use the same sieves. They all use the same uh, feeder accelerator, same feeder house chain. Essentially, they're all the same combine. How they get the additional capacity is the 80 and 90, which are the two bigger ones. Again, the only difference is horsepower. They have a little bit longer sieve extension in the front and they have a bigger discharge grate in the rear, as well as additional horsepower. They got updated gearboxes. In other words, they can twist it through there faster without dropping engine RPMs. And they have a larger grain tank capacity and faster unload rate. Just things to shove it through quicker and get it off the combine faster is how they differentiate the classes. But as far as the ability for the separation area, and everything it's identical specifications essentially to a 760. Now this year we did change over to the Klondex Max Thresh Concave. Uh, we've been quite happy with those and then we made some other revisions to this combine. Uh, we are unable to order a new combine on uh, the sheer premise again delays with manufacturing. And before I get into the combine debate, I will also clarify that every brand has its own thing and nobody has everything. I know that Case had a few things that this combine doesn't and vice versa. Nobody builds the perfect machine. So why is that? A lot of it comes down to keeping old designs and not starting over the new blank slate. I honestly think that Case IH was one of the very few companies that did that. They took a 2388 rotor and they built a combine around that rotor. So as an engineering wise, on paper, the flagship series internationals are a very good design. They're very productive and they're mechanically engineering wise, a remarkable feat. That doesn't say that there aren't some things that they need to be uh, attended to or paid attention to that I felt are a little bit cheap, but all manufacturers uh, they value profits over sometimes reliability and they know that it's going to have a certain amount of service hours to it before it needs work so that's the way they build things now with that being said as you go across the country it doesn't matter where you farm it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter um, your preference of brands all combines have something and they all lack something now in our area we're in a rolling topography with terraces hills ditches and everything else up north it's going to be flat other areas they're farmed straight up down the hills and here we farm with the hills every farming area is a little different so how do you make a machine that can go from the wheat belt to the midwest in the midwest there is 180 million acres of crop production. The two number one crops the United States growing are corn and soybeans, with wheat being in the number three at about 45 million acres. So the main demographic that they should pay attention to, these manufacturers, would be corn, soybeans, then followed by wheat. So no matter what brand of combine, maybe with the exception of like a gleaner that has an all crop concave, what do you hear about that guys need to change? Oh, well, I'm gonna do wheat this summer, we're gonna come back and do corn and beans this fall. We gotta change my concaves. That's a job that a lot of people don't like doing. When you're combining corn, even combining soybeans for that fact, you get out here in these fields, you go round and round. They go around the field, because of one thing, the direction of the alder. That's a complaint almost every single farmer has. Concaves are a complaint that almost every single farmer has. I don't like losing corn on the ground. No farmer wants to see his crop thrown out of the back of a machine. Grain loss, 
is something that all farmers talk about. And not that it really particularly matters, and you oftentimes will not be docked or even have a storage issue. It's something that most farmers look for is a perfect tank sample. So how do you not lose grain? How do you maintain that perfect tank sample? Something that I've witnessed, and I've talked to a lot of guys about, to go through a swale or anything, and the number one thing I hear is, well, the header reacts after I went through the swale. The other thing I've noticed, no matter where you farm, you get to the end of the row, you get to a tight spot in the field, when they pull up, they end up doing about a three or five point turn. It's never ever a quick and easy turn at the end of the row. These cabs are comfortable, but this is one machine that you go over all of your land with, sometimes more than once if you're in a double crop situation. So ergonomics are of utmost importance. Well, I only pull the combine out once a year, but it's not like to say I'm going to use it 50 hours a year. I'm going to run my entire crop of this thing. This isn't a tractor I can use intermittently. If I have to get my crop out of the field, that involves a combine. That involves running it on all my acres. Different people farm in different places, as I mentioned. Some guys go uphill, some guys go downhill, some guys go with hills. How do you make a sieve? How do you make a separation system that flows to all ground types? You know what else happens in the fall time? The days get shorter. It's three o'clock right now. The sun's already coming in at an angle. It's dark by seven. So as your days get shorter, what do you need at night? Good lighting. What's something that most combines lack compared to farm tractors? Lighting. Sales dust coming through right now. Comes right in the windows. We got a windy day out here today, so it's actually kind of blowing the windows off. But they're dirty. That's a complaint for every single farmer across the country. When you see guys combining soybeans, what's the number one thing you see added to a bean head anywhere? Well, I don't like losing beans on my cutter bar. Boom had an air reel or an air blower of some sort. Where's your combine stay if all of a sudden you get these little late fall misty days and it starts raining? Where's your combine sit? Iron Millie's field? Where's it get wet? Usually right in the grain tank. Right here on the side, that ladder you're getting out of the cab. I got to set this machine myself. I can get out here multiple times. Wouldn't it make sense to have the most comfortable and easy access possible? Unloading grain. You know, this tank's a 400 bushel tank that unloads to 3.8 bushels a second. That's an ideal situation, it's not going up or downhill. I've heard way too many times from multiple people about the auger dipping into a grain cart. Well, there's different carts with different cart heights. Some of these manufacturers are actually starting to cut their sidewalls down on their carts now to combat that. You know, changing direction where the grain goes, being able to see it, being able to see which side it's on. All factors that need to be addressed with the combine manufacturing. There's that 6120 again for those of you who really like it. That is one tractor we really enjoy on this one. All this harvest gets completed, what's the number one thing that guys hate to do? Probably one of the worst jobs in the farm. That is cleaning up the combine. I know a lot of guys who go out at night and they take a, a big blow gun of some sort or a big leaf blower, blow the combine off. They don't like leaving it. Debris causes fires. You know, when you're tired at night and you're wore out and it's dark out at night. The last thing I really wanted to do is worry about blowing the combine off. What about when I get this farm done? Go to the next farm. I got farm tractors that go 31 and a half miles an hour. JCB goes 45 miles an hour. What's this combine go? 23.6 at the most. You know how it rides? It's like riding a rabbit or a bucking bronco. Not very smooth. Steering. 
I'm able to run auto track on corn and soybeans. At the same time, sometimes I steer. I get around the terrace, I steer manually because the auto track sensors only follow the corn rows. When that outside snout dips into the terrace, I like to crowd them over. So I run all the borders and everything manually. When I get to the end of the row, you know who's steering? Me. So would your steering ratio be very important? All combines have something, none have all. I've even seen engineers, I've first hand witnessed an engineer at a farm progress show with his cell phone over at the competition taking pictures. All great things in this country come from necessity, the idea to become mechanized, you know, from picking this corn at uh, a year at a time with human wrists became a picker sheller, which became a combine. So the idea, the concept has been planted. What well, we've built upon and the machines that we are still building, they are concepts used in the past. So with the great idea of a combine concept that have already been invented, how can you rethink the wheel? How do you reinvent something that's already there but do it on a much more efficient and better level. Those are all ideas that I have that I'd like to go to a manufacturer with. And I have some really good ideas that kind of change the basic design of a combine. Somebody thinks square, I think round. And I have this thing blueprinted and figured out. And I'm going to try to hit up a couple of key manufacturers with these ideas. But what I'd like to know is I'd like to hear from you guys. I've got a good video audience from around the country. Let's see what you guys have as your biggest complaint uh, of the combine or the thing you like the most of your combine. Maybe it's how many turns you have to turn your steering wheel at the end of the row, or maybe it's your unload speed. What to use a big factor, besides all the things that I've mentioned in this video, what's a, what's a factor to you? And if you have an idea how it should be fixed, drop it in the comments below. So I'm gonna take this video and put it onto some paper. And the more comments I get on it, the better, because that's additional information that manufacturers need to look at. That's just more people out there saying, yes, yes, this was right. Yes, you need to address these following things. The power of people's voices will equal equal change. One thing we did to improve this combine this year was improve the lighting. We purchased a direct replace light kit from Larson Lighting. Again, this combine's a 2015 model, which the best lighting in 2015, the best factory option was what they called a Xenon headlight option, which this combine had. Uh, the Xenon headlights were the blue lights, that uh, a lot of guys call them a welder, and they, they look blue in the distance at night, and they definitely have a blue uh, cast to them in the, uh, in the darkness. And the only two of them on the outer ends were actually Xenons, the rest are actually just a halogen, uh, a really good bright halogen headlight, and they're just, they're not very bright. Uh, so we went to Larson Lights, they have a direct replace kit, which doesn't always use the original factory bracket, but it goes in the factory original location. So the combine actually kept in the factory original appearance uh, with a much improved uh, headlamp. And I need to adjust them a little bit, they're a little bit too close to the ground. But we got a nice crisp white light. Uh, LEDs are much, much brighter than the Xenon or halogen package. And the only two I didn't replace, I probably should have, was what they call the side finders. As you can see, there's the old yellowish halogen headlight uh, glowing in the distance there. So uh, quite a contrastual difference between the uh, two, two lamps. Major improvement for us. As I said earlier in the video, you get a lot of short days in the fall, so good headlights are a must, and I couldn't be happier with the performance of these LED lamps. So again, to recap the video a little bit, lots going on on our farm, but for the sake of this video, uh, share your ideas for combines in the comments below. 
uh, pros, cons, things they should do, things you don't like, all the above. I will pitch it uh, somewhere down the road. I have some contacts at John Deere, although I'm sure it will fall on deaf ears. Thanks for watching. If you want to know a little bit more about this video, check out the description below where I often write my thoughts or a little bit of more detailed information that may have not made it into the video or possibly triggers the algorithm. So, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.